All right, this is Ed Gatsky with some lecture notes on linear algebra. Linear algebra is solving sets of linear equations. It sounds a little bit scary, but it's really not. First thing we need to do when we talk about linear algebra is talk about vectors. So vectors could be purely mathematical, which is just a basically a list of numbers. But in engineering, for engineering purposes, we often represent physical quantities like forces on a bone or a joint. So each force can be a force vector showing the components in the x, y, and z direction. Alternatively, there could be a velocity, so a flow through a tube or a pipe or a blood vessel. The velocity at each point has a direction in the x, y, and z and a magnitude. Velocity has direction and magnitude. So those are velocity vectors. So we either have physical quantities or math quantities. A matrix is something a little bit different. It's basically a two-dimensional vector. So it has rows and columns. Two rows in this case, two columns in this case. We mostly are going to talk about this as a system of equations, so that if you have two equations and two unknowns, you can have a matrix of coefficients that represent those two equations. But there are other applications where matrices may show up, where you're talking about stress fields. So why are we doing this? This class is all about modeling. We want to make an observation, ask a question, figure out the physics or the science, the, the chemistry, the physics, what are the underlying principles, set up a math model, then use computers to put these two together to find an answer. So the whole idea is we're doing this so that we can put together some math with some physics to get to a solution. This matrix, what is it? As I said before, a two-dimensional array of numbers, rows and columns. So each element is going to have an index, and that index is labeled by its row and column value. So this is the 1-1 one, one element. It's always row and column. This 2-3 element is row 2, column 3, down 2, over 3. So there are lots of different ways to deal with matrices. We're just starting off by talking about indexing each individual element. And as I said, it could be a, called a two-dimensional array or a two-dimensional vector. How do we talk about valid matrices? If you want to write a matrix, a valid matrix notation would be square brackets. You could use rounded parentheses or curly braces, but you definitely do not use straight up and down lines or these bent lines. These have special mathematical meanings. We'll get to one of these, this one definitely. We're not going to talk about this one, but in general, any of these three would be okay, but we typically use square brackets for describing a matrix when we put out all the elements and trying to show what the out values are. Now, rows and columns, row one, row two. This is a two by two matrix, two rows, two columns. This has three rows and four columns. So three by four. That's how we describe this matrix, the size of the matrix. Again, a vector is sometimes called a one-dimensional array. It's like a matrix, but one of its values is only one unit long. So this B vector has one, two, three, four elements. You could talk about it as a four by one matrix or a vector of size four. A row vector has multiple columns. So this is like a, a vector, a, a column vector that's just flipped over. So it has four elements, and it could be one row by four columns. So sometimes we, we often in engineering don't worry about if it's a column vector or a row vector. In mathematics, it can be a lot more precise, and you have to worry about is it a row vector or is it a column vector. Generally, a vector is just so many units long by one. It's like a matrix that's only size one in either the rows or the columns. We need to be able to find the dot product. The dot product of two vectors is written a dot b. It's not a, exactly a multiplication. You can't just multiply two vectors. You have to have special product rules. So the vector dot product operates on 3D vectors to determine a value. So this a dot b is just the sum of the elements. What does that mean? 
if we have this 1, 2, 3 vector and this 0, 4, 2 vector, to dot it, that means we're going to dot this vector with this vector. We take the first element, the one element of A and the one element of B, multiply them together, add to that the two element of A and the two element of B, which is 4, and three element of A and the two element of B, which is 6. So 0 plus 8 plus 6 is 14. That dot product is a number. And there's something special about the dot product because the formula is also the size of A times the size of B times the cosine of the angle between the two vectors. If the dot product A dot B is 0, that means either A or B is a 0 vector, which means it's size 0, which is not very interesting. That means the A or B are like all zeros in every element. Or, more interestingly, it means that A and B, the two vectors that you have calculated the dot product, or are orthogonal, which is a fancy word for right angles. So 1, 0, 0, 1, when you dot those two, 1, 1 and 0, plus 0 times 1 is 0. Another example is 2, 2, dotted with 3, negative 3. 2 times 3 is 6, plus 2 times negative 3, which is negative 6, add those together, you get 0. These two vectors, which you may not realize are orthogonal, are going to be right angles to each other. Scalars. Scalars are a special case, which might sometimes people consider this as a zero-dimensional array. It's just a single number. It's like a matrix with one row and one column. Not terribly interesting. But we deal with these different types of values in engineering a lot. So a scalar may be the temperature at a single point. The vector may be the velocity of the object in 3D space as it's moving the x component, the velocity, the y component, the z component. The matrix may represent the stresses in a 3D object. So there are different types of matrices. A rectangular matrix is... Actually, all matrices are going to be rectangular. Sometimes we call them triangular, but they're always rectangular. So triangular is a special case. We'll get to that in a second. Square matrices are what we often talk about because they have the same number of rows as columns. So you don't have to be a square matrix, but most of our situations we're going to talk about are going to be square matrices. So the same number of rows and columns. Three rows, three columns. A zero matrix is a special matrix that just has zeros everywhere. It can be any size, any dimension. More importantly, upper and lower triangular matrices. All the elements below and above the main diagonal are zero. So an upper triangular matrix has values on the, di on the diagonal possibly. Could be zeros, but has values on the diagonal from top left to bottom right. No values above, or values above the diagonal, but zeros below the diagonal. The lower triangular matrix is again, top left to bottom right, values below the diagonal, zeros above. So these are both triangular matrices, and it's always top left to bottom right. A diagonal matrix is a triangular matrix that only has values on the diagonal. And again, some of these values could be negative or zero, but this is an example of a diagonal matrix where you have elements along the diagonal. And again, always top left to bottom right. The identity is a special diagonal matrix. The identity matrix shows up when we're doing linear algebra operations, and it's very important, just like 1 and 0 are important in scalar mathematical operations, the identity matrix is important to linear algebra applications. The identity matrix has 1s across the diagonal from the top left to the bottom right. Symmetric matrices are a little bit it just means that everything across the diagonal is the same. So in this case, element 2, 1 and element 1, 2, the ones in blue, are both 2. Element 3, 2 and element row 2, column 3 are both 4. The same thing for element 3, 1, row 3, column 1, row 1, column 3, they're all 3s. So that's a symmetric matrix, which sometimes shows up in certain cases. Matrix math. This is what we need to know. You can add and subtract matrices. So a matrix that's the same size can be added to another matrix that's the same size. This is pretty easy. You take the first element, add it to the first element. The 1, 1 element to the 1, 1 element gives you 0. 
the 1, 2 element plus the 1, 2 element gives you 4. The 1, 3 element plus the 1, 3 element gives you 12. 3 plus 9 is 12. So you just go first element, first element, gives you the first element. Same thing for subtraction. 1 minus a negative 1 is 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. 3 minus 9 is negative 6. So you just do this for every element in each of the matrices. Figure out the simple addition or sum of the two elements. Not too difficult. Scalar multiplication. In this case, the previous case, we had to have the same size matrices. In scalar multiplication, we just have a, a basically a scalar value times a matrix. We scale every element of the matrix by that scalar value. So 6 times 1, 6 times 2, 6 times 3 gives us 6 and 12 and 18 and 30. Same way we can multiply by a half. Every element goes to a half. So 1 goes to 1 half. 1 half times 2 is 1. 1 half times 1 is 1 half. The tricky part is matrix matrix multiplication. So in this case, the operation is based on connecting two matrices. The way I think about this is finding dot products. So write this formula down. The sum, the Cij element, is a sum from k equals 1 to n of the aik element times the bkj element. This is the formula, but I don't typically use this formula. Instead, if we have this matrix, we have a 2 by 3 matrix times a 3 by 2 matrix. How do we actually solve this matrix? Well, what that means is we take this row and make a dot product with this column. So 1 times 1 plus 6 times negative 1 plus negative 2 times 5 is negative 15. Then we, to find the next element, that's the first element, the row 1 of the first matrix dotted with the column 2 of the second matrix. So 1 times 3 plus 6 times 2 plus negative 2 times 4 gives us 7. Then we move down. We consider row 2 for the first matrix in column 1 and do a dot product there. 4 times 1 plus 5 times negative 1 plus 1 times 5 gives us 4. And then finally, we do the last element, this row with this column to get 26. Here's an example showing a 2 by 3 with a 3 by 1. You take this row dotted with this and this row dotted with 1, 2, 3 to get 19 and 17. Now, Notes on matrix multiplication. For a matrix A times matrix B, if A is N rows and P columns, B must be P rows and R columns. The inner dimensions must be equal. For A, the first matrix is rows and columns, so that columns of A must be the same as the rows of B. The product will always be size n by r. So that means whatever a, a times b, the resulting matrix is always going to have n rows and r columns. This also lets us know that you can't swap the order of matrices. So a times b is not always b times a. Very rarely can you actually do that in matrix multiplication. So here's a big example showing a 2 by 2 times a 2 by 5. So we do this dot product with these two guys to get this column. And then a dot product of this column with this row and this row to get the next column in our output matrix. And then this row and this row dotted with the third column of, this, of B matrix. This row and this times 3 times 0 to give us these elements. And each one of these are just dot products of a row and a column to get the output matrix. We start off with a 2 by 5, 2 rows, 5 columns. We end up with a 2 by 2. And multi um, we can't do a 2 by 2 times a 2 by 5 ends up giving us a 2 by 5. But a 2 by 5 times a 2 by 2, we can't do this row dotted with this column because this is a, a vector of size 5 and this is a column of size 2. And as I said, a times b, does it equal b times a? Usually not. There are some special cases. So if you check the matrix math on this 2 by 2 times this 2 by 2, you get this. If you swap the order, you get something different. The identity matrix is one of those special cases where you can, just like you can multiply by 1, if you multiply a matrix times the identity, 
or an identity times a matrix, you still get the same result. And the same thing 